Oh, that was some introduction. Thank you very much. It's a really huge pleasure to be here tonight. Um, look, we always start speeches by saying that, and sometimes, to be honest, it isn't a huge pleasure. Um, but tonight, it really is, and it's a pleasure for uh, a number of reasons. I'd start by saying this is the fifth graduation ceremony that I have done in four years, and this is the one that gives me the greatest personal pleasure. First, because it's the only time I've ever been asked back after doing a graduation ceremony. So thank you for the mark of confidence. Secondly, because uh, on this occasion, it was the students who first asked me back. I don't know if they'd uh, rehearsed this uh, with the head of school or not, but uh, uh, it was uh, in January that some of the students asked me if I would uh, come and speak at the graduation ceremony, which was a huge honor to be approached directly. Uh, and thirdly, of course, because this is uh, also a, a significant anniversary for the school itself, your 30th speech day. So for me, this is a triple honor, and I'm really, really pleased to be here. I should also say that some of you will know that we have celebrated the Queen's 90th birthday this week, and um, our guest of honor was uh, the actor Jeremy Irons. And for me, the most extraordinary thing about the last three weeks or so is that I discovered new, new heights of popularity. People were stopping me on the streets, slightly scary experience, frankly, and saying, um, you're the British ambassador, aren't you? And I would sort of gently say, yes. Ah, so you know Jeremy Irons. Where's our invitation? This, uh, this is real star quality. This is uh, uh, what really causes rounds of applause. Um, so it's very nice to be invited to do something in my own right this evening. Um, I'm really, uh, really pleased uh, to be here. Um, I'm going to address myself disproportionately, um, but rightly in my view, to the school leavers. Um, I will say a few words at the end to uh, their parents as well and to, to all of the parents. Um, it's always, I think there are three things that come into your mind when you're asked to speak at a graduation ceremony. First, uh, I always think, oh, this is going to be great fun. I always enjoy uh, doing these things. It's always a privilege, as I've already said, and it's also, to be frank, a bit daunting. Um, the fun bit, and this sounds a bit sad as well as fun, but the fun bit is when you reach uh, an advanced age, when you get to the end of your 40s, um, you start to think back about your uh, own graduation from school uh, and your passage into university, into adult life. And this is, uh, this is fun, a bit of nostalgia wallowing in the past is, uh, uh, is good. Um, it's a privilege, of course, because these ceremonies uh, are always meaningful. They're real points of transition, points of progress. In some ways, for the graduate leavers, of course, a point of culmination um, in your academic and intellectual and personal journeys. Um, and the daunting part is that I always feel I should say something that somebody here, preferably some of the graduate leavers, will remember. So the test is whether you remember uh, anything of what I say uh, this evening. The test for me, I should say, not the test for you. I I'm going to start with something which uh, I think is positive and I think is true. Um, you'll find in life there are lots of people who have a rather gloomy view of life, a rather negative uh, approach to things. Um, I would say don't spend too much time with them. It's probably worthwhile calibrating your enthusiasms with the odd pessimist, but the thing that you should remember as you leave school is that you are embarking on something fantastic. And this fantastic thing, we all know what it's called, it's called life. I remember as a kid, I spent most of my time wanting to be an adult, and uh, I think that was uh, a good desire to have, because life, adult life, is fantastic. Remember that, because lots of people, lots of people, 
will tell you that life is scary, dangerous, difficult, uh, something to fear, something to be miserable about. But it's not. It's fantastic. I'm going to give you a little bit of inspiration uh, from a poet that I, I don't know terribly well, but I've started to read him uh, in the last couple of years or so, Louis McNeese. Uh, one of his uh, great poems that wasn't published until quite late is called Thalassa, a good Greek word. He was a classic scholar. And I won't read all of this poem, but think about this one. He says, run up the sail, my heartsick comrades. Let each horizon tilt and lurch. By a high star, our course is set. Our end is life, put out to sea. So, this is a point of departure, and it's about life. Put out to sea. Find a high star. If you find a high star, you'll reach, you'll reach a high point. And the end of all of this, he says, is life. Now, I want to just say a few things to encourage, particularly the school leavers, about this journey called life. I'm going to start with an obvious point, which is to say that all of you, all of you school leavers, have one advantage over the rest of us who've been embarked on this journey of life for some years. Uh, your advantage is that you are young. This is a real advantage. You have the advantage of youth. You should make sure that you use the most of this advantage. Many of you and some of the younger members of school as well, have worked with me and your teachers uh, on Byron in the last few years. And some of you will certainly remember these lines where he said as a young man, talk not to me of a name great in story. The days of our youth are the days of our glory. And Byron, I think, was probably also well aware that Shakespeare had latched onto this as well. Shakespeare also knew that youth was special. And in Shakespeare, it's often the comic figures who tell you something really important about life. Amid all of the comedy, they tell you something important. And the clown in Twelfth Night sings a very famous song. I'm not going to sing it. You'll be relieved to hear. Um, but I will just say this. What is love? It is not hereafter. Present mirth hath present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. In delay... There lies no plenty. Then come kiss me sweet and twenty. Youth's a stuff shall not endure. So there are two things to remember as you go into your university or other careers. The days of our youth are the days of our glory. And youth's a stuff will not endure. So use your youth. Don't use it wisely. Use it outrageously and have some fun. Secondly, as you embark on this journey... Um, you should understand something really important about it. And some of you will have heard me say this before. Um, in our lives, we spend a lot of time uh, defining our goals and trying to achieve them, defining a point of destination and trying to reach that. A-levels, university exams, the first job, increasing our salary, buying a home, getting married... Becoming an ambassador. You don't have to have that one. Every life, of course, every life needs some staging points, and it's good to have these things, but that's all they are. Don't be consumed by these staging points. Think instead of one of our great heroes. Think of Odysseus, desperately trying for 10 years to get home, constantly delayed by his adventures, and a bit frustrated by the fact he can't get home. But all of the great poets, since Homer, and including Homer, have realized a very essential thing about this story. It's not the nostos, it's not the return that matters. It's not the point of destination, it's not Ithaca. It's the dreaming about getting home. It's the nostalgia. It's the journey itself with all its adventures. That's what really matters. And Kavafi tells us this in the famous Ithaca poem, which you all know so well, I'm not going to read it to you, but he just says at the end, in no way rush the voyage, in no way rush the voyage, better for it to last many years. So, keep it well paced. Thirdly, as your journey continues, you should expect to be changed and to be changed utterly as you grow older, as you acquire the resilience to cope with life. And 
if you get this aspect of life right, you'll find yourself constantly reinventing yourselves, doing different things, heading out in new directions, taking up new careers at the age of 40, doing something weird. I, at the age of 40, had had enough of uh, my career, and I went off and taught for uh, 10 months, which, if nothing else, taught me that I am not a teacher. And it certainly uh, was a message I got from uh, the schools where I inflicted uh, my uh, misdirected passions. But uh, it's good to try new things. And throughout life, don't just fixate on, uh, on one thing. One of the great versions of the Odysseus story is told by Tennyson in his great poem, Ulysses. And in his version, Odysseus has been home for many years, but frankly, he's got very bored and he's fed up of Penelope because she, like he, has grown old and she's become a bit shrewish and they've had enough of each other. So he decides he's going to set off again and he takes to the seas again. And in Tennyson's word, he decides to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars. So he decides again uh, to head off. So always expect the unexpected and build up some resistance. One of my favorite short bits of uh, Byron from Child Harold's Pilgrimage is about this pilgrimage and it's about resilience. And it's about the resilience that you know you acquire as you get older. And Child Harold says, but I have lived and have not lived in vain. My mind may lose its force, my blood its fire, and my frame perish even in conquering pain. But there is that within me which shall tire torture and time and breathe when I expire. So keep your inner hero alive. Find your inner hero first and keep your inner hero alive. This is becoming a bit of a an old man's uh, set of tips for life, but um, let me just say this thing to you, and this is a thing that ambassadors don't usually say, but uh, don't worry about power. Too, mu too many people, in my view, spend their life trying to acquire power. I think it's a waste of time. Look for freedom. Look for your freedom. Seek your personal freedom, but seek your own freedom so that it's always compatible with everybody else's freedom. That's the skill in life, to be free and to help others be free. I'm going to give you another bit of famous romantic poetry to make this point. And this is from, also inspired by Greek mythology. This is from Prometheus Unbound by Shelley, Byron's great pal. And at the end of Prometheus Unbound, the Demogorgon sings of freedom, and he gets it absolutely right. He says this, to suffer woes which hope thinks infinite, to forgive wrongs darker than death or night, to defy power which seems omnipotent, to love and bear, to hope, till hope creates from its own wreck the thing it contemplates, never to change, nor falter, nor repent. This, like thy glory, is to be good, great and joyous, beautiful and free. This is alone life, joy, empire, and victory. For me, as you know, those of you who've listened to me over nearly four years now, poetry I've always found challenging and difficult, but a really essential guide to the journey of life. And it's been for me a huge pleasure over the nearly four years that I've been here in Greece to introduce uh, at least some Byron College students to Byron himself and to the great tradition of Byron's poetry and his great presence here in Greece. Some of, us, some of today's school leavers, I recognize you, um, have joined us on the 22nd of uh, January uh, in the past three years that we have uh, commemorated Byron's birthday uh, in the residence uh, and then at the National Monument where uh, you've laid a wreath uh, to publicly memorialize Byron uh, at the great statue uh, that uh, is situated at the junction of Orgas and Amalias. Some of you, not just school leavers, uh, joined us at Mesolonghi last year for the Exodus when the UK was the honored country and I uh, asked Byron College to provide the central event. 
really what the students did that day was exceptional. It was intensely moving. I think, I uh, hope for those of you who took part in it, but for those of us in the audience, whether we um, were, as it were, the sponsors of the performance or just ordinary members of the audience were really bowled away by the skill with which uh, you had uh, learned and absorbed this poetry uh, which you read in English and in Greek. And I remember very well the rustle of pleasure around the room after the first poem had been read in English, uh, when I think it was the same boy read the same poem in Greek. It was an amazing evening. And I'm a lucky man because uh, being an ambassador, you collect many, many rich memories of a period uh, overseas. Uh, my four years in Greece have been fantastic. But what you did uh, at uh, Messalonghi for that exodus in 2015 was one of my great highlights and memories. So thank you for what you did for me, for my embassy, for the school, and for the commemoration of this very, very uh, important event in Greek history. Now, we've already had a farewells, and we've said that we're not saying farewells, um, but this is my last year in Greece as ambassador, and really this event is my own farewell to uh, Byron College. Um, so to all the school leavers, and to all of those of you who've come and joined me in the residence, to learn about Byron, to teach me about Byron, to read some of his poetry. I wish all of you all the best success in your lives. Now, I said I'd say a few words to your parents, and I'm just going to say uh, something very simple. I think you have brought up a brilliant generation. This is a generation of kids like no other. They can stand up in front of total strangers and perform poetry that they knew nothing about for uh, two, three, four, five months earlier. And they can do it with passion and intelligence and understanding. And this is fantastic. So congratulations to all of the parents. This is a difficult and a dangerous world that we live in. But the world will become a better place because of uh, the kids who are graduating, the kids who are going out into the world. And I say, with kids like these, we'll be fine. Thank you all.